Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome along to round six of what has been a fascinating 2014 World Sports Series season. My name is James Kirk. I'm alone here in this box once again. And as I say, it's been a half season so far, which has been the most open championship here at GPVWC in 2014. Eight different race winners in ten races. Five, oh sorry, four different pole sitters in five attempts. It has been so open, nobody can call it. And heading into the second half of the season now, who knows who will win? Who knows who will take pole position here today at the Silverson International Circuit? Slightly different to the way we're running it, or we were running it last year. Last year we ran a shortened version. This year... It's the full lot. We're looking at two minute plus laps. And entering qualifying now from free practice, I tell you what, Harley Hamnet for Enterprise GP, four tenths clear of the rest of the field. The only man to jump into the two minute 01s, looking like a strong favourite to take his second pole position of the year after the Canadian Sports Series. I do hear a number of cars out, and I shall try and find who is the first of them we have a number of uh, guys back actually after missing the austrian sports series the likes of uh, cameron brewster who was detailed in uh, my top 10 points of this uh, the first half of the season great season he's been having mike bell as well to be sixth in the championship one point behind fifth with a race win who would expect who would have expected that midnight after such a sloppy start coming back with a one two on the last uh, race in Austria. Crazy stuff. So, so open. Uh, we're not expecting rain here today, actually. So, it should be a little bit more normal than usual. But you can never be too far away from a bit of drama in World Sports Series. And we certainly hope that we'll have some exciting racing to bring you later today. And indeed now, as starting his hot lap is Ken Hunter who is joining uh, the Deltec racing team ahead of him, I think is on the TTS, but we'll go on board with Ken now as he goes through Abbey. Oh no, he's not. I'm looking at the wrong <laughs> pit straight on, oh, dearie me. Who is on a hot lap? Let's go to Roy Schroten, actually. Shout out, by the way. Let's get this over and done with. Dave Carr Smith on cameras today. Thank you very much, Tim, for being here and probably directing me towards action, which I will no doubt miss on my lonesome. But let's start now with Roy Schroten for Woods Racing. Woods, we've had a bit of a more quiet campaign this time around, unfortunately, after Oscar Hardwick uh, left for pastures anew following 2013. He's going to start his hot lap now, going slightly wide, actually, onto the home straight and heading up into the first corner now. Very, very difficult, um, as you really can't go there flat out throughout the uh, with the Porsches. You can in the career ladder, not so uh, in the Porsches. As we head now into the arena section, very tight, very, very twisty. Um, and you've got to really manage your power well here, otherwise you risk spinning. And now we're heading on to the first of the straights, the Wellington straight, heading up into Sector 2. As i just got to join something here. Uh. Right, sorry about that, just had to do sort out a couple of things but anyway going uh, with Roy Schroeder now we're into sector two just saw that little s section got to manage the power really carefully through there as well and Silverson is one of those circuits where carrying momentum is just one of the most important things that you can do because without carrying momentum you lose so so much time and through now Abbey Corner possibly one of the most crucial uh corners oh no cop sorry on the one of the most crucial corners on the track you've got to you make or break so many time, um, so much time through sector two. And now into uh, the left hander and right hander of Maggots and Beckett. And oh, Roy going very wide there. And you must risk, I mean, you've got to risk it all, otherwise, you're not going to get a good time. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, Roy going slightly wide there. And that will no doubt compromise his overall time heading up now into Stowe. Yet another driver, where you, another corner where you just got to. Maintain your momentum, hope that you don't lose as much time as possible. Heading down now into the left-hander and right-hander of the Vale. Got to get a break 
breaks it down in time. Roy doing well enough there. And he'll be coming around the final corner now to set our provisional pole time of a 2 minute 05.2. Unfortunately, that's not going to be enough to secure him pole position. I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing times um, fly, fly down the order, uh, fly down in the, uh, yeah. Sorry, getting confused, getting all different things. Uh, and Marius, dearie me, Marius Van Wick there. Getting a 2 minute 16.9 for Del Tech. Really so there. And Delia Bracalo now takes pole position. Provisional pole, I should say, on a 2 minute 03.9. Um, we've got the likes of the EGP cars, the Adonis cars, and indeed the Ice Cold cars, and Smile Power cars, of course, to come though. Maybe Midnight can spring a surprise as well. And interestingly, Roy going into the old pits as well, which is funny. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at the times for them. You see Benedictus Sinky Vicious has gone into P2 and Paul Joseph, they're going to P3. Still no one hitting the 202s though, which is very surprising. But still got plenty of the big hitters to come. Uh, watch out for the likes of Bart Voss as well, who's been looking pretty nifty in practice. Um, interestingly, if you're interested in 2013's, that's pole position last year was taken by Alex Cooper. In the Midnight car. I'm not sure whether Midnight's going to be taking pole position here. So they could spring a surprise if they're lucky. Um, and certainly. the um, As there we go. Bart DeVos doing a 203.1. Still not in the 202s though. Um, but yeah. Midnight showed a bit better form. Last time out. Indeed. With the 1-2. And indeed a good race 1 as well. Where Matt Richards got 4th. And Lewis Redshaw was 8th or something like that. Jump them all the way up in the standings to fourth and makes their first half of the year not actually look that bad. But really, I mean, they had such a sloppy start with Alex Cooper and Tom Parker falling down over themselves. And Redshaw and Richards have actually really pulled that team out of the gutters and they look relatively capable now. Only 61 points behind Smile. And that's just to say, after such a sloppy start, how open the championship is. The fact that they are only 60 points behind after multiple non-scores and then they get, get this 1-2 and suddenly they fly up the order passing the likes of EGP. Torrent Motorsports have well have been slightly underwhelming after their return from a one-year sabbatical. Only 109 points, one point behind Enterprise but yeah not really cu as cutting edge as they were in 2012 and no I, I'd expect them to stay in the championship hunt maybe the likes of them and EGP perhaps a title charge is a bit too much to expect as uh, Cameron Brewster there for Cosmo, our underdog of the season, probably. Goes into P4 for Cosmo Autosport. 204.4, really slow times so far. And I'm just waiting to see uh, where the faster guys are going to come out. The session ended with an Enterprise 1-2 with Harley Hamlet on top by 4 tenths and Rasmus Salo behind him. Uh, on a 202.3, as I say, Harley the only man to dip into the 201s. Uh, but the fact we haven't seen any 202s yet, a lot of guys are leaving their, simp their Super Pole laps very, very late here. Or later than usual, I should say. Uh, and especially with such a long lap as well. You've got to get out of the garage much more earlier than you would in a normal circumstances. Because where you have, you've got to remember, whereas usually you'd, maybe go out at around two minute mark if you want to leave it a bit late these guys are gonna have to be looking at maybe two minutes 30 at least so they can at least get round the lap and then have the uh the pole lap that they want is there we go matt richards dearie me that's poor for matt a 204.0 from the midnight drive and he only slots into p3 the man who took a p4 and a p2 in austria last time out we've got to remember actually that maybe the rain was to account for this rise in Midnight's fortunes. You know, able to call the strategy writers. Well, there we go. Jesper Tolborg for Smile Power Racing. Our championship leader, no less. He hasn't won a race this season. He has taken a pole position back in the Spanish Sports Series. 45 kilograms of weight he is carrying because he's championship leader into race one. And a 203... And a 203.1 is certainly not what he would have wanted. Meanwhile, though, I'm hearing that Eric Strana... 
who has taken two pole positions this year, is looking for a 202 here. And indeed, we do. We have our first 202, a 202.684 from Eric Strana for Ice Cold Racing. Puts him onto provisional pole position. Um, in fact, he's the only man to have gotten one pole, or well, more than one pole position and more than one race win this season. Yet, because of his not because of his absence in a couple of rounds and because of an RF scan nightmare in the Canadian Sports Series, he only finds himself in P8. Which, again, it's, it's partly his fault that he didn't turn up, but how different would things have been if he had been there from the start of the season? How different would things have been had he actually had those RF scan points? Ice Cold would certainly be closer to the top than they are, and Strana would certainly be in the championship hunt more than he is currently. Let's see whether anybody else is out on a lap. Uh, Paul Watkins there. Oh, no, let's go to Kevin Siggy. Kevin Siggy's out on the lap, and Kevin Siggy had some great success, actually, finally, in the Super Cup last Wednesday, where he won his first race of the season. He's been pretty competitive, actually, in WSS as well. He's been in and around the top 10, really provided a boost towards his automotive uh, since Ryan Walker left the team. And looking for another couple of top 10s this evening, I'd imagine, is Siggy the Austrian. As he heads into Stowe Corner. Notice Boyd Bryson is having a lot of issues today in entering and leaving the game. And the South African for RTS was, he was really looking strong in Austria. And unfortunately, things didn't go his way. We watch Siggy now as he goes through and exits Vail, coming around the final corner now. And let's see what the Austrian can do. That's a 203.2. Puts him into P4. Behind the top three of Strana, Torborg and the Moss. But again, not a 202. And it seems here that even if you want just a mildly good result, a 202 will get you high up the order. Perhaps we can have a little look at Victor Silva now coming around the final corner. The man, quite frankly, the luckiest man in the reverse grid pole races. He always seems to get reverse grid pole position. Uh, and P12 for him at the moment, a 204.7. Decent effort for Silver. Usually found uh, in and amongst the fringes of the points is the Lusitania driver. But still, so many people are leaving it late. I see the two Enterprises are out now. Jordan Weeks not qualifying just yet. Uh, we have a new driver actually in today for Aurora Motorsports, Yuha Tunainen. And maybe we can watch his progress. The Finn stepping in for Tommy Oyala. So a uh, Finn for a Finn. Not a bad thing at all. Yuha, of course, driving for THR now in former challenger. Very, very capable driver. Uh, so who's that going? Paul Watkins goes into P7. But well, let's have a look at how 29 does on his WSS debut. As Boyd Bryson enters the room once again. Hopefully he'll be able to get a lap away. Uh, 29 into turn one was one of the top ten through free practice. So already showing strong suits to these cars and I wouldn't put it past 29 and to get into the 202s especially with no penalty weight of course just going through the arena section now and out onto the Wellington straight and that's actually a point as well we have two large straights here at Silverson so it's a real nightmare for the drivers to do think about whether they want to go with lower downforce so that they can take advantage of those straights but find sector two a bit more tricky or whether they want to go for the higher downforce and be safe in the race i think most people thinking the lower downforce option is the better option uh, but that could yet come back to bite them because you never really know what the higher downforce people are going to do as boy bryce unfortunately is again he's probably not going to qualify therefore i'd imagine is two nine and heading through up into cops gotta watch out that you don't run wide here and 2-9 taken out really nicely actually, not pushing too hard, just letting the car roll. And now into the Maggots Beckett section, such a crucial section for Sector 2. And in these WSS cars you can mount the per curbs a bit more than in the career ladder and 2-9. And a little bit of a slide on the exit of Beckett's there, but really nicely held. And it's looking like a really, really nice lap from Yuha so far. I'm not sure if he's going to be in the car for multiple rounds. But um, he is looking really, really good so far into Stowe Corner now. Once again, sliding the car through there with ease, really making his 
also an S car look like a nice car to drive, which believe me, it is a difficult car to master. As Mike Bell, race winner in Canada, qualifies P5. Let's see where 29 goes though. Oh wow, that's actually pretty slow to be honest. A 203.9 from 29 and well, well, well off the pace we were expecting. Perhaps though, we can have a look at the two Enterprise cars now. Harley Hamnet, who topped the free practice session in, uh, with a 201.9. Coming round Stowe now, really pushing the car, blimey. He's currently out of the top 10 because he didn't take part in Austria. He'll be looking to remedy that. Sven de Vries for Adonis Engineering goes into P2. That's a good effort from the American. What can Harley Hamnet do, though? He comes round the final corner. And a 2.02.9. Pull that from Harley. Sees him into P3. What about Rasmus Salo now? He's coming through the final corners now into Vale. And Salo, of course, was P2 in the champ. Oh, no, P2 in free practice. His best was a 2.02.3. What can he do now? Oh, a 2.02.9. So the two Enterprise cars fall short when it matters most. Um, and wow, he's to be, deary me, second in the championship. He's got 36 kilograms of weight at 207.2. So the Dutchman starting really, really low in the order. Really low, and that is poor from Rude. And that's going to dent his championship chances. So could Eric Strana here actually be on for pole position? I think the only man who can possibly get him now is David Yunt. He's P3 in the championship. He's got 27 kilograms of ballast. He's way off, though. And Eric Strana could be looking at his third pole position of the year here. Indeed, David Yunt, only P19 for the switch driver. And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Strana for ice cold racing. I don't think he was expecting pole position coming into this round at Silverson. He's got it, though. And from Sven de Vries, no less, the two Enterprise drivers... Falling short of the final hurdle. What a shame uh, for those two. And yes, for Tolborg, then our championship leader starting P5. So dramatic, drastically changing fortunes for the two drivers of Smile and Adonis. You got two up there and two bogged down in the midfield. And that is, that's going to be a challenge for them. I tell you what, now impressive qualifyings from the likes of two, uh, from uh, Watkins and 2 Nine and. I mean, 2-9 and, of course, a debutante. And Watkins not really used to being up in the top 15 this year. But well, 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 well. And there we go. Bart DeVos. St only four drivers in the 202s. That's crazy. That is crazy. Absolutely bizarre. Everybody bottled it. Crazy. Right. So there we go then, Eric Strana. He'll be very happy with that, as I say. Um, and that throws the race to me wide open. I think, um, yeah, I cannot call a winner from that. Strana, no wait though, looking very good. Mind you though, neither does Reese Hamnet or Salo behind him, so who knows. Um... If you want to get some questions into me or some talking points, maybe what your favourite part of the first half of the season has been, then do feel free to tweet me, at Kirky Life. maybe tweet me your thoughts on qualifying, um, maybe what you expected for a race, and I'll just go and check a little couple of things now, having a bit of a driver error moment for me here. Um, life of a team manager, what can you do? But we'll get back to your questions in just a sec.
by then, so let's have a little check. So, if you're new to WSS uh, and you're not sure of the format, we have this uh, first race, which is going to be a l 11 laps in length. A very long race, probably one of the longest races on the calendar, with possibly the exception of Spa. Um, and then once we've had that done and dusted, we then move into another warm-up session where we find out a reverse grid for race two, and it's going to be 15 to 20, as per usual. Always provides entertainment, and usually gives us a surprise winner as well. We have not had a single round so far. We've had the race winner from race one go on to win race two. And quite frankly, I don't think that's going to happen all season. Such is the competitiveness of this field, of this, uh, field to date. Uh, again, you can never count stuff out. Though. It's one of those seasons, unfortunately, where I'll end up saying something and then the complete opposite will happen. <laughs> Which... Um, Generally known as the commentator's curse, isn't it? Uh, another way if you want to get in contact with me on Twitter is if you hashtag GPVWC or hashtag World Sport Series. I can't guarantee that I will miss or I will see it because the, the amount of hashtags which are on the GPVWC or GPVWC related is uh, extraordinary. But yeah, as I say, get your questions into me and. If it's, whether it's a question for the drivers or whether it's a question about uh, the race or qualifying, as I say, a favourite moments from the first half of the season, I'll make sure to write them out. I'm looking for a bit of company on this broadcast. Um, yes, there we go. I've just seen uh, Sarlo is rejoining in the proper car because both enterprises were sharing the same car, which is. Uh, which could prove a bit problematic in the race if we want to check the wing mirrors. Uh, so, Salo in the blue wing mirrored car now, and it's going to be interesting how those two actually fare throughout the race. We saw Salo debut last time, and unfortunately he picked up penalty points uh, for crashing into De Vries and causing himself to spin and causing a collision. That was a very exciting moment on lap one of race one in Austria, and I wonder whether he can prove himself to be a bit better in the... Uh, in the dry conditions of Silverstone, which I must say is a bit of a surprise. We are usually expectant of rain in Silverstone, and it's been nice and dry so far. In fact, I'm looking out of my window now, clear blue skies. So RFE's got this one right. Well, maybe they got it right. I live far away from Northampton, unfortunately. But it's been lovely weather, and nice and hot as well. And actually, it was interesting uh, listening to the midnight drivers uh, talking in the paddock before going into free practice even and they were talking about tyre pressures and how high they were running I'm not going to diverse uh, different strategies of course but it was intriguing that you know on how they were managing it because of course at a track like Silverstone which is very much biased towards the right hand side of the track um, you want to have lower tyre pressures to make sure that you turn into the corners better. Of course that compromises you on the left-handers, but ultimately tyre wear is going to be quite a factor around here. There's going to be very high tyre wear, there's so many corners and so many high speed corners as well, that if you don't have a setup to combat that, you're going to be finding yourself really struggling at the end. And Although the 11 laps is a far cry from the 20 or 22 something laps we had last year on the shortened circuit, this race is going to be infinitely more interesting, I can tell you that now, because faster lap times is going to lead to a greater diversity in the field, and those guys who do wreck their tyres more than other people, who might have gotten away with it on the likes of the Bahrain circuit, or Austria, or in Austria, They'll find themselves in real, real trouble here. I'm not going to be expecting pit stops as such, but we might see a couple of spins near the end. So, who is going to be the winner? Um, dare I say it, it's usually a commentator's curse, isn't it? I'm going to go for Strana, purely for the fact that he's a classy race leader. And in Austria, he really showed that off when he held off the likes of Augustin Canapino and indeed Jesper Tolborg for pretty much the entire race in difficult conditions to take the win. 
Uh, as I say, he's the only person to have taken more than one race win and more than one pole position, taking his third pole position of the year here today. And I wonder whether he can take his third race win to complement that. So, we are just about to line up on the grid now. No penalties coming into this round, actually. It's uh, very, very nice to see that there was such clean racing last time out, actually. Uh, really nice. It was a nice surprise, especially when there's been a couple of uh, bad incidents in the International Touring Cup, our sister tin top series for this year. Uh, so hopefully we'll have another clean round as it's Eric Strana then, the Swede, leading us off from pole position, his third pole position this year. He leads from Sven de Vries and that's actually, now it comes to my mind, that's going to be a very interesting front row. These two are battling all the way through the Canadian Sports Series, never leaving a second between them. Um... And ultimately, though Strana did win race one in the Canadian Sports Series, he lost it due to his RF scan penalties, as I mentioned earlier. Round two, I wonder who's going to come out on top. Maybe it'll be one of the two Enterprise GP cars occupying the complete second row. Harley Hammett, the Australian, ahead of Erasmus Salo, Augustin Canapino. Unfortunately, um, a party who was forced to leave as we <laughs> had three competitive cars who... Um, and, well, you can't have three cars in the World Sports Series, unfortunately. He was the... Uh, he was left out of qualifying because he wasn't able to join in time. Yes, but Tolborg then, our championship leader, hasn't won a race this year, remember. He starts P5 and he's got 45 kilograms of weight ballast, so a great job for him to be up there. Bart DeVos, wonderful qualifying for the Triple 20 driver, is P6 with Kevin Siggy, the Austrian, P7 for Waters Automotive. Mike Bell, really good qualifying actually from him to be P8 for Missouri Racing, with Fran Lopez, P9 for Ice Cold Racing. <laughs> A race winner, um, Ilya Bacalo is P10 for Triple 20, and Yuha 2 9, and after such a nice qualifying, is missing his bumper already. So the Finn, who was looking for a decent result here, unfortunately may have to find himself pitting and starting from the pit lane. Martin Palm for Torrent Motorsports starts P12 with Matt Richards, unfortunately seeing Midnight back down the order in P13. Paul Watkins with, I think, his best qualifying of the year, if I can remember correctly, for P... Uh, he's in P14 for TWR. And Menno Klont is P15 for the Satania. We then have Benedictus Sinkivicious, P16 for Waters Automotive. Underdog of the season so far, Cameron Brewster, P17 for Cosmo Autosport. Morton Vernerson has been having a great couple of rounds so far for Dre Racing, P18. Uh, Lewis Redshaw, race winner, can you believe, from Austria Race 2, P19. And David Junt, who is P3 in the championship starts uh, with 27 kilograms of weight ballast there in 20th. Ben Horrell starts P21 for Dre with Riku Sarpia, 22nd for Mizurik. Victor Silva, our reverse grid pole man uh, for the majority of races this year, starts P23 with Thomas Hins making his debut for Woods Racing in P24. Good qualifying from the Australian there. Lewis Travis starts P25 for Raw Motorsports with Paul Joseph, P26 for TWR. Roy Schroten is P27 for Woods Racing with Rude Heesterbeek, a nightmare qualifying for the guy in second position in the championship. 36 kilograms of weight ballast for the Adonis driver. He's 28. Ken Hunter on debut for Deltex starts P29 with Rob Mason starting P30 for Cosmo Autosport. Marius Van Wick starts P31 for Deltex with Jordan Weeks not even out of the garage, so he'll be starting from the pit lane if at all. Simon Melhirsch will there start, uh, therefore start P32 for Motorsport Safety Foundation. And Boyd Bryson, who failed to qualify after multiple computer issues. Therefore starts P33 in the racing team Schroten car. So then the drivers get into their positions. And it's going to be interesting to see how turn one pans out. Not as tight as Austria, but there is plenty of opportunity for drivers to go wide and potentially cause havoc. How will the Enterprises fare? How will Bart DeVos fare? How will Rude Heesterbeek get through the many cars ahead of him? We're about to find out as we have one, two, three... Four, five lights in here in Silverstone. We're racing. And I think that was a jump start from Sarpia back there in the field. But it's a decent start from Strana. It's a decent start from Salo as well, who's past Hamnet. And into turn one we go. Everyone trying to filter themselves through. Salo goes slightly wide. Oh, multiple cars off there. I don't think anyone was in too much trouble, but there was a couple of spinners for sure. Eric Strana, though, leading smoothly from De Vries, Salo and Hamnet. Torborg manages to save it. And look at Kevin Siggy there. Into the arena section, trying to get past Torborg 
into turn four. No, he can't do it. Um, but he's ahead of Bell, actually, and DeVos. DeVos losing two positions there. Matt Richards, our sergeant. The, oh, DeVos going off wide. Come back, come back. Matt Richards, he's had a great start from P13. He's up to P9. Same for Martin Palm. Up into P10 as the lead is now head into the S section now. Strana from De Vries, from Salo, from Hamlet. And the two enterprises almost colliding there as they go through the second part of the S. Good stuff from Torborg. Oh, De Vos, he's losing position after position now. He's been caught out really, really badly. And the Belgian, after such a great qualifying, falls all the way down to P14 behind David Yunt, actually. Who is P20? He's gained seven positions already. Interestingly enough, as well, Yuha 29 and who's missing a front bumper, apparently carrying on, and he's been able to stay P11. So, kudos to him there as the leaders now enter the Maggots and Beckett section. The front four actually beginning to uh, stream away now from the rest of the field. Tallborg, his weight really starting to. Uh, affect him we saw his weight uh, his 27 kilograms of weight affecting him in austria in the latter half of the race but with 45 kilograms from the off it is going to prove a real task for him to stay where he is for the 11 laps of this race poor torborg the danish driver has some work ahead of him to keep off the likes of kevin siggy who's gone with him mike bell good start he's leading a small pack there of Richards Palm and Lopez in P10. There's a right gangle of cars behind him. I tell you that now. As round the final corner for the first time comes Strana. De Vries goes slightly wide. And as I say, Salo and Hamnet are there or thereabouts. They are all four of these guys pulling away from Torborg in fifth position. Who defends from Siggy. Uh, and oh, there's Matt Richards on the inside of Mike Bell into turn one. Great move from the Welshman there. Really opportunistic and... Richards had some overtaking to do in Austria last time around, and he's really using that to full effect. Mike Bell, by no means the easiest man to get past. And the Welshman looking back, he's here. Oh, Mike Bell! Oh, that was a bit rude. And now, Richards is going to lose out to Palm as well. I can see an incident report from that. So, Mike Bell back up into seventh, and Palm capitalising that into eighth. Great little scrap from these two is ahead of them. Kevin Siggy looking on the inside of Torborg. He can't get it done. Now Palm on the inside of Bell. You want to make your moves early with Bell. Otherwise, he's going to cut you off. And Bell able to hold ahead for now. But he's really providing a bottle cork effect for these bottom of the top 10 runners. Fran Lopez, remember. A race winner, as is Bell. Um, leading and rear gunning this quartet. Palm and Richards will just want as many points as they can. Looking back up at the front, though, no. Eric Strana and Sven de Vries now have begun to stream away from the Enterprise cars. And I did, I was wondering whether we would have a return of um, Strana versus de Vries from the Canadian Sports Series. As I say, in that particular race, race one of Canada, um, definitely worth watching, by the way, if you haven't watched it, Strana came out on top. But an RF scan penalty across the event meant that the win was handed to Sven de Vries. And it remains de Vries' only win of the season so far. To be fair, actually, the roles are now reversed. It was Sven de Vries who was leading for the majority of the race. And then Strana came at him on the final lap to take it away at the last gasp moment. Now it's roles reversed. And oh, we've got a bit of... um, Oh, wow, we've got a bit of battling back in this 7th uh, to 10th battle. Fran Lopez, I think, dived up the inside. And now Mike Bell back into P7. Matt Richards and Martin Palm going side by side. This is insane stuff. Fran Lopez, because of his lockup, miles behind now. And actually, I noticed... Oh, God, let's take him into turn one. Oh, my word. Martin Palm. Oh, no. Bell's off. Bell well held. But these three are going manically at each other. And into turn three we go now. Richards gets ahead. Great move into P7 once again. And now Palm is past Bell as well. And he's into P8. Mike Bell shuffled down to P9. I don't think he's going to let that last, though. Also of note, Kevin Siggy is now he's now disposed of Jesper Torborg, who I think will be quite happy to be in the place where he is at the moment. Far enough ahead from Richards that he has a bit of time before those lot potentially catch up. Um, but still, 10 points will be good for the championship leader, especially given where Heesterbeek is, which is P20. He is in that reverse grid pole position group. Um... But nowhere near the points. And that's exactly where Torborg will want him. So Siggy into P5. And Palm and Bell still going side by side in P8 and P9. And this might be a move coming up now into Cops. Bell alongside Palm. And oh, no, no, no. Wow. 
Bell goes. Oh, he went slightly off track there. I'd argue as to the validity of that. I think he just got away with it. Oh, my word. And, well, whether it's legal or not, we'll have a look at it later. Bell manages to get into P8 ahead of Palm, who's now a bit wrong-footed into Magus and Vickers. Actually, now has to defend off Lopez. Back at the front, though. Oh, look at DeVries. Look at DeVries. He's going up the inside of Stowe here. And can the American make the move stick? Strana around the outside, defending well. But DeVries has been cranking up the pressure ever so slightly. And with these two battling, no doubt the Enterprise cars will be reeled back in. Strana able to defend off DeVries for now. But for how long is the question? I'm certainly not sure. It's only lap 4 of 11 we're heading on to now. There's plenty of this race to go. And you can certainly see there the Enterprise cars are absolutely closing in on these two battling. As Strana locks up heavily into turn 1. I'm surprised he managed to get that turn in actually. I'm going to keep an eye on the gap between uh, Harley, Hamnet and Kevin Siggy as well. Currently 2.6 seconds. We'll see whether Siggy can catch up to the back of this to make it a five-way battle at the front. Torborg still ahead of Richards, Bell, Palm and Lopez. DeVos is back up into P11, by the way, after his earlier offs. And uh, David Junt actually, fair play, up into P12. Lewis Redshaw, P13. Yuha 29 and his missing front bumper starting to play a bit of havoc with him now. He's under attack from Ben Horrell in 15th. Great effort from him. And Cameron Brewster there in 16th as well. And they've got to be careful because they've got the whole contingent of reverse grid pole runners there as well surprisingly no retirement so far and everyone on the lead lap as well so continued good racing uh from all of the drivers so far wonderful to see uh that gap between siggy and hamnet by the way definitely coming down is now 2.4 seconds um and if siggy can keep up that two tenths per sector he will be on to the back of that battle uh, for the lead in no time at all and we'll certainly see that spice up as uh, the leaders head through Maggots and Beckett's. Let's go. Oh, is that a nice battle still at the back there? Let's go to Lewis Redshaw, actually, in P13. As I say, there's UR29. And this is, the, this is the bit where I was really worrying for him. Look how wide a berth he has to give into those corners to be able to make it round. And Ben Horrell taking full advantage of the Finns bad uh, turning in ability. Horrell up into 14th and now 2-9 and has the Cosmo Autosport car of Brewster looking on the inside of Stowe and 2-9 and looking on the inside of Horrell as well. Ultimately 2-9 and able to stay ahead of the Cosmo driver for now and he'll definitely have the inside of Vale unless Brewster can break later around the outside. No, he can't. And I must say, 2-9 and fair play to him. He could have pitted. He could have started from the pit lane doing a stand-up job. And if he's able to keep this going for the next half of the race, he may yet still be in with a chance of a good reverse grid pole position slot. Um, back up at the front. Oh, we've got a switch in position here for the two Enterprise drivers. Harley Hamlet and Rasmus Salo switching positions. Harley Hamlet going slightly wide, though. Blimey, these two have... Falling off the back of Strana and uh, De Vries now. And is that a bit of flashing as well? Or I think is that potentially... I think it's Hamnet letting Salo through? Yeah, must be. Hamnet was going slow. So maybe some contact between the two Enterprise drivers. And Salo going... Oh no, Hamnet going back into third. Sorry, not Salo. Um, but they've really got to watch out. Because Siggy now only two seconds behind. The Austrian is certainly catching up. And a P4... Would be a lovely result for him. And I'm sure that Mr. Waters himself would be ecstatic with another good position. His other driver, Benedictus Sinkivicius, languishing down in P20. As you are 2 9 and is out of the points now, I've noticed. And now battling with the Lusitania of Victor Silva. So Brewster is past. And I'm afraid that's game over for the... Oh, 2 9 in the points is... He has contact with Silva and that lets Travis and the D-Heast to be through. So he's to be almost into the points as well. Not sure whether he'll get there in time to score any. Um, but he's doing... Oh, no, he's not! Oh, there's contact! Oh, no! Oh, what happened there? What happened there? Let's have a look at what was going on. There was contact between 2-9 and, and... Oh, yeah, I think that might actually have been... Yeah, it was contact with Silva. Silva went into... Uh, into 2-9 and, and 2-9 and went into Heesterbeek. Oh, what a shame. It was all looking so good and poor Heesterbeek has got a long way to go now and what an awful day for the Dutchman. Almost as bad as David Junt's day in Canada. 
onto lap six of 11 now. Hardy Hamnit is flying away from Rasmus Salo and rapidly capturing back the time that he lost to the leader. So this slide through the arena section. Salo, I think, a bit of a cork in the bottle, if anything, because now Kevin Siggy is only 1.8 seconds uh, behind. No? Yeah, 1.8 seconds. Yep, 1.8 behind Salo. So, perhaps Salo, the cork in the bottle, maybe his tie wear a bit higher than the others. Um, I'm not sure about Siggy's, actually. I think Siggy goes through his through his tyres pretty badly as well. Um, also, a shout out to Jesper Torborg, actually. Torborg, after being passed by Siggy, hasn't exactly left the Austrian's vicinity. And as I say, that P6 will do him very nicely, especially considering what has happened to Eastbeat now. Matt Richards in seventh, pulled away from the likes of Palm. And Palm has certainly pulled away... Um, from Bell, who is in battle with Lopez still. Mark Voss on his own in 11th. David Junt on his own in 12th. Lewis Redshaw on his own in 13th. And there's Horrell 14th. Bruce the 15th. And the reverse grid runners, um, potentially, are now Travis Silva, Sinkubicious, Mason, and Mel Hewish, who always seems to end up there despite never qualifying for safety, of course. It's always the way for the Motorsport Safety Foundation team is UHAR 2-9 and has indeed retired. Um, I was worried about that front bumper. And one must wonder whether it would have been safer for him to start from the pit lane rather than risk it like that. Talking about risks, what must Sven de Vries do to get past Eric Strong? Or is he biding his time? I think he has to make a move now, sooner or later, because Harley Hamnet is rocking up to the back of these three. And it's almost, it seems that three-way battles are just the way to go in WSS. We had one in Spain between Canapino, um, Easterbeek and Torborg and we had one in Austria just two weeks ago with Canapino, Strana and Torborg and here once again we have one Enterprise, one Adonis and the Smile Power has been replaced permanently now it seems by the Ice Cold. Oh, look how close Harley Hamnet is now to Sven de Vries, he certainly got a nice exit there onto the Wellington Straight and one must wonder whether Hamnet's going to have a go down into turn six here. He has a little peak, doesn't he? As Eric Strahan locking up heavily, heavily into turn uh, into turn six and throughout in, ooh, Hamnet losing a bit of time there, getting a little bit dodgy on exit. But Hamnet's with them now, isn't he? And we saw Canapino in a similar situation two weeks ago he sprung the surprise on Tallborg about halfway through the race but he was never able to take advantage of Strana once again locking up throughout Cops as De Vries going massively wide of Cops and Harley Hamnet taking it really better than either the two in front of him into Maggots Beckett's now these three separated by seven tenths of a second no doubt that will be closer as Harley Hamnet gaining buckets of time the man who was fastest in free practice, the man who was disappointed not to get pole position, is still seven tenths behind the lead, but is closing ever so much. So that said, De Vries now has the slipstream of Strana and is able to defend nicely. And look at that, Strana again, locking up. If his tyres don't go by the end of this race, I will be mighty surprised because he has been wrecking them this race. Locking up at every corner. Oh, Harley Hamlet thought about it, didn't he, going into the Vale? Maybe he has to stay behind for another lap as we head on to lap 11. Meanwhile, Rasmus Salo. It's either Siggy's tyres have gone off or Salo has found some pace somewhere. The gap between the two of them is now back up to uh, 2.5 seconds. So again, overall of 7 tenths. So Salo looking good in fourth. Siggy fifth. Torborg sixth. Richard seventh. Palm eighth. Fran Lopez has actually gone past Mike Bell. And noticing Mike Bell now, he's fallen Back hand over fist into the clutches now. Bart DeVos in 11th. And with him dragging along David Junt, our man placed third in the championship. Will Bart DeVos? Oh, Bart DeVos and the little bump of Bell there into the arena section. Bell has to go slightly wide, no doubt. Bart DeVos will let him back in. And now David Junt having a look around the outside of the Belgian driver. Nothing doing, but DeVos up alongside Mike Bell now. These two going, oh, Bell going slightly wide. And oh, a bit of contact there on the Wellington straight. You can tell that this is going to not end well. There's David Jones as well. He's going to look in to get on the action. He's going to have to break early because these two are going headlong into turn six. And Bart DeVos is the inside. Can Mike Bell hold on around the outside? No, he can't. A little love nudge. 
from Bart de Vos on exit there. Uh, but the Belgian goes very wide, actually, into turn seven. And, oh, Lopez has spun! Lopez has spun! And, oh, all three of those overtake him as does Lewis Redshaw and the Spaniard rejoins in P13. Meanwhile, Bart de Vos and Mike Bell still going at it. Hammer and Tong into Cops now. Bart de Vos around the outside! Oh, can he get this done legally? He's saved within the limits, and now we'll have the inside heading into Maggot. That said, though, Bell's going to try and say, yeah, they're not going to go too wide, surely. Wow, great racing from these two. And, oh, Bell goes slightly wide, and oh, no, off he goes. Off he goes, and Bart DeVos and David Junt go through. David Junt gaining 10 positions overall from this race. Lewis Redshaw going through as well. Uh, Mike Bell, therefore, joining ahead of Lopez, and those two who were battling for 9th and 10th are now down to 12th and 13th. Also of note, Cameron Brewster has gotten past Ben Horrell for 14th and 15th. Only two and one points, but still worth something. A good reverse grid position, also guaranteed in that position. Um, and just looking back up at the front now, lap 9 of 11. Sven de Vries is ever so close to Eric Strana, isn't he? He looks the outside of the arena. Watch out for Harley Hamnett as well. These two separated by 5 tenths of a second, even less. Harley Hamnett on the inside of De Vries throughout that arena section and look how close they are on exit onto the Wellington uh, onto the uh, Wellington straight here De Vries with a slipstream Hamnet with a double strip stream if anything goes wrong between these three Salo there in the background nice and clear he will pick up the pieces if necessary Strana once again locking throughout and oh Hamnet he's going up the inside of De Vries there was a little nudge there but De Vries holds on just about and, oh, there's a bit of switching there, actually, between David Jun and Bart DeVos. That's because Bart DeVos has gone off. And the two rejoin side by side, heading into turn six. So, David Jun, that should be P9, I'd imagine. Yep, the Swiss driver up into P9. Great race so far from our, champ our longest leading championship leader. Meanwhile, though, back up at the front. Just great battling all over the place. But Hamnet, ever, ever so close. There's oh, De Vries into, uh, into Maggots. Oh, he's on the outside now. And has he gone too wide? I wonder if he has. He's made a similar mistake to Bell and Hamnet. Oh, great move from Hamnet. Though he, now he's gone wide, surely. Oh, he's just about held it. So Harley Hamnet. He surprises Sven De Vries as De Vries makes the mistake. Very similar to Austria race one. This isn't it. Harley Hamnet now up into P2. And can he make an impact on this race on the inside of Stowe? Strana once again losing time. And you can see how hard... Hamnet is pushing, and I actually think that Salo is looking at him. And, oh, Hamnet for the lead. Oh, he mounts the curb, and he's not going to want to do another move like that. Sven de Vries right on the back of him. He's got to be careful and choose his moments right. Otherwise, there's going to be pain for all of them. We saw this in Spain race one, where Canapino f just clattered himself into the back of Torborg, uh, causing a penalty for Canapino and dropping in many positions. Actually, De Vries there lose, um, completely missing turn two, actually. And heading through turn three now, Salo visibly closing up on the back. It, it, such is the way the battling goes. And Kevin Siggy still remember, 4.8 behind the lead here in Torborg in close vicinity as well. Look at Hamnet, though. Hamnet's had a great... Strana's going ultra defensive already. Hamnet's had a great exit onto the Wellington straight. And the Australian is going to have to try really hard around the outside here if he wants to get something done. I wonder whether he's gone for a wider berth naturally there to try and pick up the inside of turn seven. I don't think he's going to be able to get it. No. Strana defending really, really nicely. It's lap 10 of 11 here. The penultimate lap. And you can see why perhaps Harley... He's trying in many places where perhaps you wouldn't think about. Oh, my word. Is he going to have a go to cops? He's pulling along. And then he's no. He's got to dip back in. He's not got enough straight line speed. And this is something interesting. I wonder whether Harley Hammond is running higher wings. He certainly had a better exit off of cops, though. Into maggots. Oh, my word. They're going side by side. Around the outside. Oh, what a move. What a move from Harley Hamnet there. He takes the lead of this race. Wonderful stuff there. That was amazing. So Harley Hamnet now leads from Strana, De Vries, and Salo, all covered by 1.3 seconds. And Hamnet has basically done what Strana did to De Vries. He has taken both of them in the space of two laps now. And the question is, can Harley Hamnet, who started P4, 
win this race. Can he hold off the likes of Strana and DeVries for one more lap? He has chosen a really good time to make his move, but there are still plenty of opportunities to overtake one mistake from Hamnet. And it could be all over. Final lap. The gap between Hamnet and Strana. Six tenths of a second. If anything, Hamnet's beginning to pull away now. His bottle cork effect from Salo has been broken. His bottle cork effect from the Vries has been broken. And has his bottle... Or is there a bottle cork effect to be said from Strana? I said that his tyres were going to get damaged if he kept on locking up. He's still locking up throughout this arena section. And I think... That Strana might be in real, real trouble here. Him and De Vries have been battling all race long. Whereas Harley has bided his time. And entering sector two now. The gap is now nine tenths of a second. It's increasing rather than decreasing. And look at Strana and De Vries. They are struggling. Salo now is rocking up to the back of these two. And perhaps Salo the Finn can provide a surprise move for a podium here. Behind Siggy and Torborg, still 5th and 6th, Richard 7th, Palm 8th, David Junth 9th, Rachel 10th, Lopez 11th, he's got past Bell again, Bart DeVos 13th, he must have fallen off the road somewhere, but let's see Harley Hamnet now, start, he's putting away, he's putting away, there's nothing you can do, I think actually Strana and DeVries, they should be relatively safe, Salo not within striking distance, I don't think is. oh my word, DeVries, He's trying desperately to get that P2 and through this section, through battling Salo, starting to catch back up again. Heading to Sector 3 now, the gap between Hamnet and Strana, 1.2 seconds. It's increased over this entire lap. And unless the Australian messes up Sector 3 horribly, he's got this race in the bag. Strana defends off the race for P2 into Stow Corner, locking up once again. His tyres must be absolutely destroyed. But I think he's going to hold on to Reese. Goes slightly wide. And I think it's all over for this battle now. It's been a battle of epic proportions. Or epic proportions, rather, from start to finish. But coming round the final corner. It's the first win of the season for Enterprise GP. Harley Hamnet wins. Race one in Silverton. Strana second. The Reese in third. Rasmus Salo fourth. Grey Evan from the Finn. Siggy fifth. Tallborg sixth. Matt Richards comes around the final corner to take seventh. Palm eighth. Yunt's coming home. A very impressive ninth from P20. Great job from the switch driver there. Lewis Redshaw, P10. So actually a decent points haul from midnight. Actually not too bad at all. Lopez 11th. Bell 12th. DeVos 13th. Brewster 14th. And Ben Horrell rounding out the point scorers. And that means our reverse grid poll people... Oh, God, my voice going there. Our reverse grid poll people are unsurprisingly Victor Silver in 16th so he's pretty much guaranteed himself a good position unless the number 15 is called um, actually so that's, that's the point actually Horrell's in there as well as he finished 15th and it's Silver Sinkovicious Schroten Vernison one to watch out for in reverse grids for sure and Rob Mason and wow what a fantastic race that was from start to finish action everywhere you couldn't keep your eyes off it. But what of the likes of Heesterbeek? He finished P22 in the end. He's having as bad a day as Yunt was two weeks ago. Amazingly, though, only three retirements throughout that, enti throughout that entire race. Yuha Tunainen, who lost his front bumper on the formation lap. Lewis Travis, uh, who did... Uh, who crashed out, I think, in a very similar accident or in the same accident that his teammate Corso... Um, it was, so, yeah, both of Raw is out. A shame for them. And Riku Sarpia for Mizurik Racing. Who I believe had a drive through anyway for a jump start. And only one guy to get lapped as well, who's Thomas Hins on debut. So, what a, what a great race that was. Unbelievable stuff. And the first one of the season for uh, Enterprise as well. Should jump them right up the order. Adonis Engineering. Will be happy, I think, with DeVries. Sad for he to be ice cold, doing well there. Smile doing well there. So, as I say, it's so open. You can never predict these things um, from race to race, honestly. It's anyone's game as to who finishes where. Um, and who would have guessed that Harley would have won that in the end uh, from P4? Apart from the free practice base. Excellent stuff. Right then, so... As I say, if you have any thoughts on that or if you want to get involved, tweet me at Kirky Life or hashtag GPBWC or hashtag 
World of Sport series, all one word. And while you're getting your tweets in, or if you're even listening, uh, let's uh, actually have a little look at who's going to be on reverse grid pole position. Victor Silva always seems to be the lucky man. So if we get P16 again, I'm calling witchcraft. Witchcraft and blasphemy. Because... He'll be the luckiest man alive if he does get reverse grid pole again. And I'll tell you what, he's he's one of those drivers who doesn't have the front running pace, but he always seems to make the best out of those reverse grid situations as well. Lusitania always a force to be reckoned with in the reverse grid races and always scoring well. And it's why they found themselves um, not near the bottom at all. They're actually relatively competitive in the midfield. And so I'm just going to wait for all of my cars to load in. So that I can actually get off of R Factor, that'd be a good thing. What am I saying? I love R Factor, I can never get off of it. I think I'm actually going to uh, take this opportunity to have a little plug as well. So, 21st to 22nd of June, if you haven't heard, GVWC is going to be running the biggest event it has ever run, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. I believe we've got 14 cars or something signed up. We're going to have Simon Smith commentating the entire thing. I will no doubt pop in as I'm running two cars in that series. Uh, it's going to be great fun. There's no doubt going to be probably takeaway bingo and all those lovely things which you love to see in a race. Um, it's great fun. And even if you're able to tune in for just a little bit, maybe an hour or so, it will be much appreciated. Right then, let's find out who is the reverse grid pole sitter for race two. I remind you, your candidates are... From 15th to 20th, Horrell, Silva, Sinkuvicious, Schroten, Wernerson, and Mason. And your reverse group pole sitter is the full number 20. So it's Rob Mason on pole position. Um, so <laughs> Silva still in a good position at least. Uh, but Rob Mason... Maybe looking to do what Cameron Brewster has done, his teammate, in so many reverse grid races and bring home a decent result. They've had one podium so far this season. Maybe Mason can hold on to get a second. Let's have a little look to see where we've got any tweets in. Ah, Ben Willis. Shout out to you. He's, he says he lives about 30 miles away from Silverson. Bone dry, clear skies. So thank you, Mr. Weatherman. Seems that RFE has got it absolutely right. It's the same here in the south of London, or south of London, I should say. Very nice skies. Um, and very, very um, nice conditions, clearly, uh, for what Harley Hamlet in taking his first win of the season. Enterprise GP's first win of the season uh, in WSS, that should be said. Um, right then, so... And Andreas Waters tweets us to say, How far do you think Rude can move up the field in the first race? Hell of a job he'll have to do. Well, if you'd asked me at the start of the race, I said I would have thought that he would have been able to get into the top 20 to be with a chance of a good uh, reverse grid position poll. He was there, and in fact, he was looking to score points. But unfortunately, he was taken out um, in a domino accident, all led off by Victor Silva, unfortunately. So... Will he score points in race two? I think he will, actually, because um, remember, the weight penalties now get shifted from the top five in the championship to the top five runners of race one. So that means that Harley Hamlet will be ca carrying the full 45 kilos of weight ballast. Um, Strana will be carrying 36. De Vries, 27. Salo, 18. And Kevin Sigge will be carrying nine kilograms of weight. So I think Rudy Sabik sh should, unless something goes horribly wrong, he should score points at least um but we said very much the same of Yunt. you know you're expecting Yunt to score some points at least in Canada race two and he ended up non-scoring there as well uh, so let's hope that things go much better for Rude um than they do or they did for David uh that said Torborg after that race has actually increased his lead of the championship by the full 10 points because the man behind he's to beak or maybe hold on yeah yeah, he has. No one has overtaken Heesterbeek, despite that non-score. Yeah. Crazy. 
So yeah, Torborg has, yeah, just increased his lead by 10. 10 free points. And trust me, in this sort of championship, 10 free points is going to be crucial for you. Not sure what that does exactly in the cons in the uh, team's standings. I'd imagine the Enterprise has gone back up into 4th ahead of Midnight. We'll have to wait and see then. We'll have to wait and see, as is the case in any sort of WSS event. Such an open season. And that's why I want more. More WSS. It's all good. After this round, we've got... Oh, let's not screw up your mass James. 7, 8, 9, 10. So we've got four more rounds left. Um, where are we heading to next? We are heading to Hockenheim next, a German sports series. Um, then we have the... Belgian sports series, I think. We end, I know for certain, on the Italian sports series at Monza. And really, what I should do is I should just look this up since I'm on the internet anyway. Ah, that's the one. Hungary, that's who I was missing. So yes, German sports series at Hockenheim, then the Hungarian sports series at the Hungaroring, Belgian sports series at Spa, and the Italian sports series at Monza to finish up. Lots of great rounds still to come. And we certainly hope that you lot all join us for those four rounds. It promises to be a championship on both sides of the table. Um, which should be finished up there and then, actually. Um, not before. Which is great, because I think we finished up with three rounds to go or something. With uh, both championships. <laughs> Let's see. Eric Strana has tagged me in something. Ah, funny. Not WSS related. I thought he was going to go on about being annoyed or something, but he's not. Love Strana. Great character. Love, love, you know, love all Swedish people, actually. Go visit Sweden. Lovely place. Not hosting the Eurovision, unfortunately. It's already hosted it. Um, but yeah, I do wonder how, what Strana or where Strana could have been had it not been for those bad. For that Canadian sports series and missing out on a couple of rounds. He would have been well up there, I imagine. He's on 81 points now. He's already caught up with the uh, the likes of the top four. In fact, is he in fifth then? Yeah, I think he's moved his way up into fifth. Perhaps barring Hamnet. Anyway. We've got a reverse grid race to do. And leading us off on our formation lap is Rob Mason. For Cosmo... Autosport, can he provide them with a good result like his teammate Cameron Bruce has done for so many races this season? We shall see. He leads off from Morton Vernerson. I've said it before, he is one to watch out for in these reverse grid races. Really, really grown in uh, stature has Vernerson since joining the WSS. And certainly one to surprise us with a good result. Roy Schroeden starts P3 for Woods Racing, or does he? I think he may have disconnected. Yeah, I think Roy Schroeden's disconnected. Oh, what a shame. So that means then that Benedictus Sinkivicious is going to start P3. Uh, Victor Silva will start P4. Yep, there we go. Confirmation Roy Schroeden. Oh, what a shame from a great position as well. Ben Horrell then, P5. Cameron Brewster, P6 for Cosmo. Bart Devos, P7 for Triple 20 with Mike Bell, P8 for Mazurik, starting where he started in race 1, funnily enough. Brandon Lopez started P9 for Ice Cold. And Lewis Redshaw rounds out the top 10 for Midnight Motorsport. David Junt. Who is now, um, he must be fourth in the championship now, starts P11. Uh, for Small Power with Martin Palm, starts at B12 for Torrent. Matt Richards starts P13 for Midnight with Jesper Torborg, our current championship leader, P14 for Smile. Kevin Siggy begins our weight penalty man. He's P15 for Waters Automotive and he starts with 9 kilograms of weight. Rasmus Salo is P16 for Enterprise GP and he is with 18 kilograms of weight. Sven Derice is P17. For Adonis Engineering, he has 27 kilograms of weight. Eric Strahan is P18 for Ice Cold Racing, and he has uh, 36 kilograms of weight. And Harley Hamnett, our race winner from race one, starts P19 with 45 kilograms of weight ballast. Then our boy Bryson rounding up the top 20 for Racing Team Stroten with Rude Heesterbeek. Now P21, second in the championship. He'll have no penalty weight at all. Expect him to score unless something horribly goes wrong. The two TWRs then line up alongside each other, um, or... 
beside each other, whatever. Paul Joseph in P22 with Paul Watkins P23, not capitalising on his decent qualifying in race one. Then a glance P24 for Lusitani with John Weeks P25 for Torrent. Ili Bricalo is P26 for Triple 20 with Simon Moe, who is P27 for Motorsport Safety Foundation. Ken Hunter leads a Deltec row with uh, him in 28th and Marius Van Wick in P29. Thomas Hins, the first of our retirements in race one, um, or last, I should say. I oh, know, it was lapped, wasn't he, Thomas? So, our right, lapped guy from race one uh, starts P30 for Woods. And then we do have our retirements. Lewis Travis for Aurora, P31. Riku Sarpia for Missouri, P32. And Yuha Tunine, and rounding out the field, this time with his front bumper, starting from the wooden spoon position of last. Who will win this race? Hard to tell. Hard to tell. If you go in by basic results, one would say Mike Bell, as he has had a race win this season. Don't count out the likes of DeVos, Brewster, Sinky Vicious, and Vernison, though. They could spring a surprise, I'd imagine. In terms of championship leaders, the closest one is Yunt, though Lopez has won a race as well. We'll find out in due time. As the lights come on, we've got one, two, three, four, Five in here for the second time in Silverson. We're racing. And Rob Mason, though he bogs down, actually does get a decent start ahead of the rest of the field. And into turn one, he leads from Vernison. Sinky Vision, and there's Cameron Brewster. What a great start from Brewster up the inside of turn one. And he's into P3. Cosmo are 1-3 at this early stage. Great stuff. And up the inside, there goes Victor Silva. Ben Horrell into P4. So it's a Cosmo Drake. Cosmo Drake formation. As Benedictus Sinky Vicious. Oh, and Silva and Lopez, they come into contact. There's a bit of bumpiness out of the arena section. But down the main straight, Cosmo and Drake, team owners, Ben Willis and Joshua Anderson. Um, they may need a new change of pants as Vernison now goes for the lead into turn six. Can the Danish driver get him? He's on the outside now of turn seven. He's going to have to try really hard to get past him. Oh, he has to stay behind though. He has to fall into formation. Bruce the third. Horrell fourth. David Jones up to fifth. Great start from the Swiss driver. Sinky Vicious uh, sixth. Bell seventh. Silver eighth. DeVos ninth. Lopez tenth. Redshaw eleventh. Richards twelfth. Siggy thirteenth. Palm fourteenth. And Jesper Torborg rounds out the point scorers in 15th. Meanwhile, up at the front, Morton versus take the lead of the race. Oh, where did he do that? I think he must have caught um, Mason Navin. Actually, Mason's lost the position to his teammate Brewster as well. So Morton Vernonson now leads the race for Drake Racing from the two Cosmos of Brewster and Mason. Oh, ben Horrell there. Great exit out of Beckett. He's looking up the inside of Ho uh, Mason. And watch out for David Junt there as well. His two race wins this season have both come from reverse grids. And with 11 laps of this race to fight over, he's going to run the outside of Horrell into Stow. Oh, and Mason spun. Mason spun. Free position for Junt. He has to avoid uh, Mason, actually. So... Ben Horrell stays in P3, but Mason, oh, what a shame from reverse grid pole. The pressure getting to him, but David Junt up into P4. I have a new favourite for the race win now. Meanwhile, Mike Bell disposes of Benedictus Sinky Vicious. He's up into P5. Fran Lopez P7, DeVos P8, Siggy P9, Victor Silva. Now down to P10 is, oh, you hard to nine and DNFs again. What a disastrous evening for the Auroras. Oh, there's an MSF round. Oh, I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure who that is at all. And where have the Enterprises gone? That's a question. Harley Hamlet down in P28. Oh, disastrous for him. And where is Sarlo? Sarlo's up into 14th. Right, so Harley Hamlet's had a moment somewhere. A race one win. That's a shame for him. And just had a message through from someone. Who is messaging me? Ben Willis. Um, <laughs> he says, pants definitely changed. And so they need to be, good sir. Morton Vernison and Cameron Brewster have a one-second gap from David Junts, who's now actually in third after disposing of Ben Horrell there for P3, the Swiss driver on the move. And could he be looking for his third race win of the season? It's a definite possibility. But he's got to now traverse a 1.9 second gap to the lead. Ben Horrell's then fourth. Mike Bell fifth. Fran Lopez sixth. Benedictus Sicky Vicious in seventh. With Bart DeVos eighth. Siggy in ninth. Redshaw tenth. Torborg eleventh. Palm twelfth. Rasmus Salo now P13 after getting ahead of Eric Strahan and Matt Richards and Jordan Weeks all in this battle. And there's Root Heesterbeek as well with his teammate Sven de Vries. And is Root Heesterbeek going to go around the outside of Jordan Weeks for P16? I think he is. 
into Maggots and Beckett's. No, Jordan Weeks stays ahead, actually. Fair play to Jordan. Great defensive driving there. But they are on the fringes of the points. A shame for Harley. He's already up to P26 again, actually, and not too far behind. So potential silver points. Um, with such is such is the way of WSS. Fortunes reverse, and he's got 45 kilograms of weight as well. Real annoyance there. Back up at the front, heading into the veil. Morton Vernison. Not sure how to pronounce that, actually. Oh, actually, no, let's look behind there. Mike Bell defending off Ben. Actually, no, that means the Bell's gone past Horrell for P4. And Horrell looking up the inside now, and Mike Bell into the final corner. Watch out for Sven. Oh, Fran Lopez there as well. As uh, Mike Bell goes well, well, well off the track and rejoins ahead of Horrell. And Sinkovich is there as well. These four, all pretty aggressive drivers. And with Bell leading them, you know there's going to be a Bell train about. I can see Carnage, unfortunately. I always do, though. It's the pessimist in me. Um, but yeah, David Junt has slashed his gap to lead over the case of one lap to 1.3 seconds. As who is that falling down the order? Um, oh, it's Silver. P20 now. P20 for Silver. Real shame for him there. He's um, out of the points, unfortunately. Not capitalising on this race. Um, but meanwhile, David Junt, the gap now to the lead, 1.1 seconds. And you can see Junt visibly closer to Cameron Bruce. There's still loads of battling around outside of the top 10. But we want to keep an eye on what Junt is doing here. Because with a decent result, Junt could jump himself right back in this championship. Especially with his teammate Tallborg in P10. Oh my word, look at this battle here. P P10 P down to 14. All within two tenths of a second. There's Salo up the inside of Strana. Strana around the outside. And God, this is going to only end in tears, isn't it, for these four? Goodness me. There's Torborg there. He leads in P10 of this little group. There's Redshaw in 11th and Strana 14th. Hopefully all four of these guys will be able to keep it on the road and out of too much trouble. One would hope, anyway. Because, oh, wow, you've got Matt Richards there as well. Richards has fallen down a lot, actually. P14 and Jordan Weeks P15. So, plenty of battling going on there. The gap now one second to the lead for David Junt. And I reckon David Junt might very well have a good chance of winning this race. Once we finish this lap, we're only going to be heading on to lap 4 of 11. We're not even halfway through. As old as Fink was who fell down the orders. Benedict is sinking vicious out for Waters Wall Automotive. We're saying for the Lithuanian driver there. Six tenths the gap between Jantz and Bernison now. With Brewster in between. Jantz going to have to put all his years of experience at sim racing to the test it. To get past Brewster, who once again is looking so, so strong. Looking for a podium, defending into the arena section. Yunt gets a much, much better exit though. On to the Wellington straight we go. And Yunt is almost pushing Brewster around that exit there. Bernison leading this race. I wonder for how long though. Cameron Brewster pulls out to defend. Yunt goes back onto the racing line. And Cameron Brewster for the lead. Oh my word. Cameron Brewster from absolutely nowhere takes the lead in this race. And I'm not sure whether Bernison went wide or whether... Brewster thought that was a good place to strike, but the Cosmo driver now leads this race. And David Junt is going to be looking ahead and thinking, oh no, why didn't I make the move there and then? Because now he's got to get past Morton Vernison to get into P2. Heading into Cops we go. And David Junt, is he going wide? No, he takes it nicely. It's actually Cameron Brewster who goes slightly wide. And a little bit of a wiggle for Junt on exit. Um, heading into Maggots Beckett's. Junt has a look, but he can't do much, can he? He's looking, he's looking, and he just can't get anything done. He's going to have a good run onto the hangar straight now, though. And as I say, it's only lap 4 of 11. We're not even halfway through. So there's plenty of time for Yunt to both plot and actually execute his moves. When he has the time. Go heading into Stowe now. Wernerson, oh, he's hitting the apex wonderfully, is Wernerson. Really Really good driving, but Yant, I reckon he's going to have a little dive into the veil. No, he's not, actually. Interestingly enough. Meanwhile, Siggy... Um, oh, yeah, so there we go. Lopez is actually up into fifth. That's because of Sinkiewicz's disconnection, or retirement. Siggy is sixth. DeVos, seventh. Horrell now down to eighth, so he's fallen down a bit. Palm, tenth. Torborg... Um, no, Palm, ninth, sorry. Torborg, tenth. Strana, eleventh. Weeks now up into twelfth in that massive battle... 
for the final points. Redshaw 13th, DeVries 7 to 14th, and Salo now down to 15th and defending off Rude, uh, Rude Easterbeek. Meanwhile, Morton Vernerson defending heavily off David Junton, heading onto the Williamson straight. Vernerson goes wide, and Yunt, he's going on the inside, and Yunt should be through nice and easily there. The Swiss driver is up into P2. And given that he doesn't receive a reverse move as Riku Sarpia retires from this race, let's see whether Vernerson makes a move. No, I think his battle's not with Yunt. Yunt is a much more capable driver, unfortunately, much faster than Morton. And now Yunt is going to set his sights upon the race leader, Cameron Brewster, for Cosmo Autosport. His lead is currently six tenths of a second. And what he's going to be hoping is that Vernerson actually is able to keep both keep up with Yunt and actually have enough in the tank in the tank to attack him. Whether he's going to be able to do that though, yeah. Uh, I don't think he is. I don't think he's got the ability to unfortunately. I could be proven wrong though. I have been proven wrong many times in the past. As Ben Horrell has um oh where on earth has he spun? Oh he's um spun out of the exit of cops and out of the points you go sir. All the way down to P18 uh, and battling with Paul Watkins. Sam is a rude Heasterbeek. Is into the point. Um, so good news there for the Dutch driver as he tries to recover something from this evening. Meanwhile, Cameron Brewster, lap 5 of 11. Once we pass, well, we have passed the halfway mark as Fran Lopez goes off very wide in his battle with Mike Bell. David Chant, oh, you can see he's faster through there. You can see he's faster through there. The Lewis Redshaw's fallen down to P15 now in the midnight. So the midnight's battling on the fringe of the points. David Jump, though, is ever so close. And actually, these two battling, Morton Mernison, Mike Bell, and Fran Lopez are all within two seconds of Brewster as well. So there could yet be more drama. As I say, Mike Bell and Lopez. Also race winners as Brewster goes wide into the arena section. Yunt will want a better exit and he clips the curb a bit. And Vernerson will actually look to try and take advantage of the slipstream here. As will Yunt on Brewster. And you can see how close Bell and Lopez actually are. They are looking for good results this race. Really good results. A solid evening for Ice Cold so far. And looking to be even more solid. As for me, Zurich, through the efforts of Mike Bell into turn 6 and 7 we go. David Jump ever so close. Ever so close. But Brewster is just putting his Cosmo car in all the right places. And the gap between first and fifth is now 1.5 seconds. The longer that these two battle, the closer that gap is going to get. You've got the likes of Kevin Siggy there as well. Only 2.7 behind. So David Jump. If he wants to be sure of winning this race, he needs to make a move. And he needs to make it now on the outside of Maggots. He can't do it, though. And he's going to be slightly misplaced throughout Maggots there. Now into Beckett and Wernerson up the inside. Oh, my word. There was not a gap there to be had, Mr. Wernerson. And now the top five are all within six tenths of each other. This is going to prove problematic for David Jones' aspirations of a race win. Heading into Stowe Corner, the... There goes Fran Lopez up the inside of Bell. But unfortunately, Morton Mernison has kind of provided a bit of trouble there. And he's been able to defend off both Lopez and Bell. So Lopez threw on Bell. Great defending uh, from Mernison. There is me. Oh, my word, the veil. Lopez mounts the curb. And through goes my Bell. Oh, the rounds goes Lopez. And that's going to be another report. That's a shame. Lopez was looking really good there. Really feisty. How far down the order? Does he fall though? Oh my word, that was a dangerous rejoin. He comes back on ahead of Jordan Weeks, though Jordan Weeks is now ahead. So Lopez down to P10. And actually, what on earth happened with the Adonai? Spend the race into 11th. Rue, he's speaking to 12th. As Kevin Siggy dives through on Mike Bell as well. There's um, up at the front as well. David Jones on the inside of Cameron Brewster. This is for the lead, and David Jones done what he did to Morton Verneson just a couple of laps ago. David Jones runs Brewster out wide as well. That was a bit rude. And so the Swiss takes the lead of the race. But for how long is the question? Morton Vernerson and Cameron Brewster are still there. Into uh, 10 seconds to go. And oh, contact between Vernerson and Brewster. And oh, no. Oh, Morton, my word, almost collecting Bell as well. Oh, it's all pants down and embarrassment for the Drake outfit. As Morton Vernerson spins out of the podium. 
and rejoins in P7. By no means a bad result, but he's easily going to be overtaken by Eric Strana behind, I imagine. So now, the race order as it is on lap 7 of 11. David Yunt leads this race. He is on course, if nothing else goes wrong, to take his third race win of the season. Cameron Brewster in P2 once again in his home race, no less. Looking wonderfully good. Kevin Siggio, P3, will want to get P2. Mike Bell will want a taste of the podium once again in P4. Will he get a penalty, though, from that contact with Lopez? We'll have to wait and see. DeVos, great effort for him for, for triple 20. P5, Torborg in P6. Again, great, consistent effort from the Danish driver. Ahead of his fellow compatriots, Morten Vernerson, still ahead of Eric Strana. As Jordan Weeks looks on the inside of Strana into Stowe. Strana looking to hold on the round, around the outside, and I think he's just about to get to do it. Let's keep an eye on these three, because it looks like something's going to take off between them. Um, Jordan Weeks on the inside of Strana, and Jordan Weeks has Strana, though, into the penultimate corner. Yep, so Jordan Weeks up into eighth for Toro Motorsport. Strana now P9 ahead of his teammate. Fran Lopez P10, Sven de Vries P11, he's to be P12, Salo P13, then Palm P14, and Lewis Redshaw currently rounding out the point. Points, even. In P15 is, oh, Aurora Motorsports. Lewis Travis out again. Quadruple retirement for the Aurora outfit. An awful, awful day for them. Really is such a shame. Meanwhile, they're still battling, heading into the arena. Look at Jordan Weeks now on the inside of Morton Vernus, and he pushes Vernus now wide. A bit rude there, Jordan, I must be said. And so he moves up into P7. Strana P8, and oh my word, there goes Fran Lopez off the road. So Strana P8, Vernerson. Now into P9. Lopez is for P is P10 as oh there goes Strano on the inside of Weeks. And he's got him as well as oh my word, Weeks. Mounts the curb and what's gonna happen back there? Oh Wernerson! Oh my word! Oh, there's contact between all of them. Jordan Weeks in oh, that's not worth that wasn't worth it. Or is it Palm, sorry, who got collected there? No, it was Weeks. Oh what a shame. And Wernerson, that was really silly out of control and so that means that Strana now into P7, De Vries P8 and he's the big P9, they'll be ecstatic with that, Salo P10, Palm P11, Wernerson comes back on P12, Richards P13, Lopez P14 and Redshaw through all that is still actually P15 with Paul Watkins close behind him, it's a real gaggle of cars behind him as well, plenty of opportunities to lose that point one would imagine. Back up at the front. The gap is now 1.1 between Brewster and Yunt. But how long will it be? Brewster in second. Kevin Siggy going around the outside of Stowe. Can he make this one stick? It'll be a wonderful move from the Austrian. If he can. Oh, wonderful stuff from Kevin Siggy. Ever since his race. Well, mind you, he had a bit of a mare in Super Cup race 2 at Austria. But he's looking so much better in WSS and in tin tops in general. P2 for the Waters Automotive driver. Brewster down to P3. Is he going to be on the podium? I'm not sure now. I'm not sure because there's Mike Bell. And behind Mike Bell, not far behind at all, is Bart DeVos and Jesper Torborg. Uh, Jordan Weeks becomes the sixth retirement this race as uh, Simon Melhuish has also crashed out. Hardy Hamnett, our race winner from race one, also out of the race. They're all starting to drop off like flies now. And we look now to Cameron Brewster hanging on. To Mike Bell, DeVos hanging on to Torborg, Strana, DeVries, he's to be Consalo, all in their own spaces, as is Palm and Wernerson. Richards, though, isn't. Richards is in a huge battle. Oh, Bell, Bell's passed, is he? Wow, good move from Bell. Let's have a look. That must have been into turn six. Yep, he got the slipstream. He pulled out. And oh, it seemed that Brewster actually went a little bit wide. And yeah, you're not going to open the door to Mike Bell and expect nothing to happen, to be honest. And so. Brewster off the podium, unfortunately, but still P4, a mighty effort from the Brits. But oh, to be honest, it's even debatable whether he's going to hold on to that because DeVos and Torborg are right with him as well. So David Junt leads by 1.4 seconds from Kevin Siggy, from Mike Bell, from Brewster, from DeVos and Torborg, who are battling going into Maggots and Beckers. Then it's Strana, DeVries and Heastabeek, all in close proximity. Then it's Salo and Palm in a battle of their own. Vernison on their own. And then there's the massive battle for P13, 14 and 15 between two Midnights and Fran Lopez. And oh my word, Richards. That was a good save. And the Midnights are going to have to want to be careful here. Because otherwise there is going to be trouble. Um, and make it double. Good Pokemon reference there. Just shove it in. P9 
Meanwhile, oh, what's happening with DeVos up there? Is DeVos um, having to go with Brewster? No, it's Brewster having to go with a bell, actually. Brewster finding a bit of fight in him, actually. And a bit compromised heading out of the veil as we head into lap 10 of 11, our penultimate lap. But the bell for the final podium place is not over yet. Brewster looking to the inside of Bell now. Is he going to make a move? He has a look, doesn't he? But he's not able to make it stick. Meanwhile, Torborg looking on the inside of the Voss. And oh my word, he almost straight line turn too there. Crazy stuff from the Danish driver. All four of these within the second note. Um, and the motto of WSS, you never know what's going to happen in WSS. Never more apparent here. It could be the Voss on the podium. It could be Torborg on the podium. Brewster could... Sorry? Something has happened to Richard. Thank you very much, Dave Carr Smith, my cameraman. Um, oh, yeah, let's have a little look here. Oh, he was going very slow. What on earth happened to him there? Um, oh, what on, earth? what on earth did happen? I think he might have had a screen freeze or something because he just went straight. Right on, Brewster's back to third. I wonder whether Richards has had an engine failure or something, but Brewster is back into third. Not, um, yep, through um, the arena section. And Mike Bell back through on Cops! That didn't last long. And oh, here comes Torborg! Here comes Torborg! Great exit through Cops, and he's going to take DeVos into Maggots. Lovely move from the Danish driver. Meanwhile, Mike Bell does genuinely retake third position. Is the time for Torborg now? Is he going to strike? He's not going to win a race. For this season, and actually, I'm looking at that gap between Siggy and Yunt, and that is within a second. I wonder if Siggy's found something. I really do. I think Yunt's got enough of a gap for now. But meanwhile, what a great battle as uh, Rude Heastabeek there goes through on Sven the Reese for seventh and eighth. So Strana's has fallen behind both of Donai, actually. So Strana, once again, his tyres failing him, I think. Meanwhile, Torborg looking on the outside of Brewster. Brewster goes deep, and here comes Torborg around the outside of the penultimate corner. Well defended from Brewster, and I think Mike Bell, given he doesn't mess up now, should have that podium nicely signed up in his name. And here comes Torborg now on the inside of Brewster into turn one. He has to come back in, though. He's not going to be silly and try it through there without a serious chance of gaining the position. Uh, it's been a good event for Torborg. Not exactly stellar by any stretch of the imagination, but solid points picked up. 21 at current position as, um, oh, what's going on there? Vernison up into 12th. So it looks like Redshaw has cut something. Lopez into 14th as well. So plenty of switching and changing. Still going on. Onto the Wellington straight for the battle for the podium. Look how close that is from 3rd to 10th. Very close. And Brewster, is he going to have a go on Bell? Yes, he is. But is he going to go wide? Bell's going to take advantage of this, methinks. But Brewster is the inside for turn seven. Bell around the outside. Oh, I think that's well defended from Bell. Great defense. He's known for it, of course. And he's going to maintain P3 for the moment. It is ever so close between these three, though. Torborg now looking to pounce. Looks on the inside of Brewster. Is he going to have a look into Cops? No, he pulls back in. Points better than potential wrecks, he's thinking. And that's a champion's way of thinking as well but look at this the Adonai have caught up onto the back of the Voss as well so there could be plenty of chopping and changing in the final few corners for sure look how close they are great effort from the Adonai to catch up to these guys David Junt still leading Kevin Siggy those two as close as they have ever been this race but the battle from oh my word it's from third to 11th now all within Three seconds of each other. It is ever so close. It's anyone's guess. Salo actually looking on Strana now. Who's into P9. Salo on the inside of Stowe. And I think Salo's got him. But let's cut now to David Yunt. He was my pick for a race win. If he was able to get through the crowd and get through the crowd, he did. He's not going to be letting Strana get away from him so far on race wins. And he takes it in race two. Kevin Siggy, wonderful drive from the Austrian. He is P2. Uh, Mike Bell does come in P3, Brewster P4, Torborg 5, DeVos 6, De Vries 7. Wow, Salo into 8th. He must have taken Rui Hisabik as well, um, who finishes 9th. Strana 10th, Palm 11th, Wernerson 12th, Lopez 13th, Redshaw 14th. Um, and Ben Horrell actually takes the final point for Drake Racing. So a double store for Drake. Great racing all round. Your retirements uh, were in reverse order. Richards. 
Hamnet, Weeks, Klont, Melhuis, Travis, Sarpia, Sinky Vicious, and 2-9. And so a much more deadly race um, than race one, uh, but uh, an exciting race nevertheless. And it puts Yunt right back into the championship hunt. And also fair play to Heastavik as well. He could have had an awful, awful evening, but he was able to rescue something. And um, great effort for him to do so. I'm just going to add everyone's palmate points up. Uh, good effort from Bella as well to get a podium. Thinking about it. So, do do do, -do Strand got six. Brewster got 13. And Richard's got nothing. Okay. So, let's see. So, Tallball gets 21. That means that he's on 124. He's to be gets seven. So, that means he's on 100. And five. Yunt, the best scorer, I believe, of this round, gets 32, which means that he's on 120, so he's jumped Heasterbeak. So I believe it's a smile 1 2 now. DeVries got 27, which means that he's on 108, and he's actually jumped Heasterbeak. Um, and of course, we've still got a factor in Hamnet as well, who scored 25 points. Um, though non-scoring race two will probably mean that he doesn't jump as high as he was expecting. So we now have hopefully a couple <sighs> of interviews to have with the drivers. Once my half factor works with me again, there we go. Right. So let us start with um, let's start with the podium man from race one, an all-round good scorer, Eric Strana. A P two. In race one, great effort, and a P10 in race two, which was a decent effort considering that you had 36 kilograms of weight ballast. A decent evening for you overall, and it puts you on to let's have a look. It puts you on to 87 points, so you're almost back up with the uh, championship leaders now. That sounds good. That's what I like to hear. Um, how was your evening overall? Was it was it an easy evening, a hard evening? Were you surprised to get pole position even? Because we were expecting the at least one of the enterprises to be in there, and they both fell short of the mark. No, to be honest, uh, I knew that I could. Uh, uh, I mean, to, in order to get pole, you have to make sure you heat your tires up, and I knew I did a really, really good job of that on my outlap. So I was not surprised that I actually ended up getting pole. But I was a bit surprised at Harley's pace at the end of the race. That was, um, I think, he had other tires or something, because I was suffering hard from tire wear because I was. Busy keeping Sven behind me, uh, and then Harley just comes and flies around both of us. Was like, okay, well, that was that sucks, kind of. Well, I mean, we saw you locking up all over That's the place. Right. I, I was, I was certainly looking at it, um, <laughs> and I, I thought your tires were going to go off sooner or later. But well, we look at Ice Cold solid in the team's championship. Ice Cold doing well in the drivers' championship with yourself and Lopez both scoring reasonably well tonight. You're still on that. Yeah, we don't really have many team. Aims so far. I mean, we've only got four rounds of the season left. Well, I mean, I, I mean, t to be fair, me and Fan, we don't really talk that much in practice together, so we uh, we just kind of take what it what we get, sort of thing. Uh, I know Fran was running really well until he made a mistake at team in race two. Um, so if we just, like I said, like I said before, keep those mistakes out, then we uh, should be able to score better. But uh, yeah, race two, I actually got a top ten, which was my aim, uh, the highest I. Managed to score from reverse grid was uh, 11th, so I was up in 7th, but I was trying to kind of muscle my way past there. But back to the question, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we'll just take what what we get, sort of thing, and just see where that leaves us at the end. All positives. So well, lovely to have you, Eric. Well done on your results once again. Ooh. And now we move on to race winner. I mean, <laughs> well. Yeah, why did I say that Stran has ra three race wins? I don't know. You I now, do. You do. But yes, I got do. one taken away from me. That's why. Oh, uh, of yeah, of course. Well, that's why. Let's. I'm sorry, Eric. I'm sorry. Hearts out to you. Let's move on to David, who actually now takes the lead for official race wins. You've had three race wins this season. You're now back in second in the championship after overtaking uh, Heastavik, who had a nightmare round, quite frankly. You must be relieved with that, especially after a fantastic race one as well. I mean, you flew through that field. Um, well, I'm not actually very um, happy with my qualifying and also not with my race one because 
I know I finished ninth, but it actually didn't went like I wanted because on the first lap I tried passing you who had no front bumper I think and Menoclont and we were side side by side or free right into uh, I think uh, Stowe and I had I had like no nowhere to go anymore I had to go somewhere I went right and I gave I gave Menno the lightest tap to his right side and he spun and I'm, I don't know what's gonna happen but very sorry about that one because I, I didn't mean to just just not enough space anymore but I take ninth because actually actually thought that the second last lap was the last so I slowed and then noticed oh oh it's one lap to go and quickly sped up to get part well with a <laughs> with a messy round for me this time messy but it got the job done as I say you're back in P2 it's a smile power one two in the championship now surely that's going to be a great place to be especially with only four rounds left do you feel confident now that you as a team can take that team's title and for you yourself do you think you've been our longest leading championship leader this season can you retake it or are you not too fussy is it all about the team game now well, as for the team championship, I'm quite uh, positive about it because we've got me and Jesper and uh, Jesper's known not to make too many mistakes and he's really shown his pace uh, this time again and that's why I think we're gonna probably going to get, uh, get some more good results. But just for me, of course, I want to get back in first because this connection in Austria, the first race, and then going wet instead of slicks and... Uh, DNFing on the last lap because my tires were shot. That really hurt my uh, championship hopes, and I think that's more than 10 points I lost there at least. And well, I do hope that I can um, battle Jesper, Root, and Sven for the championship again. And uh, actually, the, the, the win here, the second race win, that just came like a bit surprised because I didn't think it would happen. Um, I, I don't put it down to the to the ballast weight. I just put it down to I don't know. Maybe sometimes I just make mistakes I don't need to, even when I practiced. And you've seen it with my qualifying, but I can do it like at Montreal. So I think um, I'm gonna look forward to the next few races. And I think it's not over yet, and I'm gonna fight on. Well, it's good to see that you're still having a positive outlook on things. Thank you very much for joining us, David, and well done on your results. And now we have a bit of a joint interview going on because, well, Kevin Siggy on a bit of a roll currently. P2 in race two, P5 in race one. I've got team uh, Waters team manager, Mr. Waters himself, Andreas, in the room with me. And I've also got Kevin Siggy. How much of a lifesaver has this boy been, Andreas? Because ever since he joined the team after Ryan left, he has been putting in great result after great result. Yeah, he's... He's just amazing, basically. Um, um, he's one of those guys that just gets on with it. Um, he's still young. He has a, a lot of talent. And I was watching the race on the stream. Of course, it was the commentary was good again. Oh, thank and you. And you can just <laughs> follow the entire race, and you can see him step by step coming through the field as he, uh, especially in race two. Then, and it's been a long time coming. Uh, we. I think it's the first uh, podium we get in 2014. Uh, so Kevin really uh, gave us that that next step after a long drought, let's say it like that. But really, uh, uh, you should interview Kevin because he's the man in the spotlight right now. Well, let's indeed talk with um, Kevin. I mean, coming into this round, Waters were seventh in the championship, a real charge starting from the Canadian Sports Series. And it's been this combination of yourself and Benedictus. Unfortunately, Benedictus just was luckless tonight. Um, but you and Benedictus, from what I've seen, have been working really well together. And do you find it easy or hard to attain these results? You know, do you have to work extra hours to you know, get the right sort of Porsche setup going? You know, explain to us what it's like at Waters Automotive and how, you know, how you're enjoying your success. Um, uh, I'm actually not practicing a lot. I don't have really? a lot of time. I I seriously don't have a lot of time to practice because of school stuff and uh, and some other personal personal things that are going on in my life. And 
I think I practiced like 45 laps yesterday and today for one hour, but I didn't expect to be as good as I was today, uh, especially in the race two. Uh, I don't even like the track. Uh, the the layout of it in this league is um, how should I say it? It's it's not good. It's not bad, but it's in the middle. Just the curves are the worst in this league, and I didn't expect to get so much pace in it and right. especially in the Porsche the next step is the win Kevin you've been able to take one in Super Cup in the most recent round in Austria we've got four rounds left to go that's eight races are you eyeing up any tracks to try and take that win or is it very much see what I get. You know, if I'm good, I'm good, and if I'm slightly off the pace, then so be it. Um, I'm looking for a win, definitely. Uh, uh, this week, this week I finished with school stuff. That means a lot of practice for me and the team. A lot of more practice will be going on in a few days, and especially for the win. Uh, I'll be, I'll try my best for this team from and especially in Super Cup as well uh, on I think that the team will be very high up uh, if I if I practice a lot more than now we certainly hope to see whether that improvement does come thank you to you and thank you to Andreas for joining me as well, nice to see the good team, Waters Automotive, having some good results. And actually, been joined late by Harley Hamnet. Um, race two, not great. Got bogged down. Um, I've heard all this stuff about bad you know, standings and everything. But let's focus on the positives. Race win. Enterprise's first win. To be fair, I was slightly surprised you didn't get pole position. But you just, as, as Eric said earlier... Your pace just came from absolutely nowhere once you had left Salo behind and a fantastic event for you, surely. Yeah, the event went well. Had a pretty bad qualifying. Ran wide at like four or five corners. But um, yeah, in the race, I was behind Salo. I just held it there for a few laps um, and then knew I had to get by if I wanted to go for the win. So yeah, managed to get through. And then my pace was fairly quicker than Eric and... Um, Sven, so just went on from there. Now, I've called you at times the mercenary this season because you've mm -hmm. been popping up at different teams, you know, giving them all great results. From what I, well, from what I'm thinking, you have the pos or you have the potential to lose the seat now with Matthew Allenson coming back in the car sooner or later. What are, you, what are your plans for the rest of the season? Do you plan to take part in every event up until the rest of the season, or you know, just just give us a general. Harley plan for the rest of the season? Are you playing wins? Are you playing podiums? Are you planning to even race at all? I'll look to continue, yeah. Uh, who that's with, I don't know yet. Um, yeah. As far as team-wise, yeah, I don't know. Um, results? Yes, yeah, podiums. That's really what I'm after. Yeah. That's been a strong season for you so far, Harley, and we Thank certainly you. hope to uh, see that continue with whatever team. You are fighting with and well it's been yet another eventful round of the WSS it certainly doesn't disappoint still an open championship it is anyone's game though I think Smile Power will be pretty happy with this evening's events I if my maths doesn't fail me they have most certainly um, taken the championship lead further away from the clutches of Adonis Engineering and ice cold racing I'd like to thank my cameraman for this evening once again, Dave Carsmith there as always, telling me where stuff is where I don't know it is. And make sure to join us next week for the Career Ladder, Formula Challenge on Tuesday, Super Cup on Wednesday, Super League on Thursday, Silverstone once again before we head to the British Internet or British Touring Cup on the Monday after a Rockingham. And then two weeks from now, you can join us once again for the WSS where we'll be coming to you from the Hungoring, sure to be causing plenty of um, tie wear issues. Um, 
And actually, just before we go, we're going to have a little quick interview with Mike Bell, um, who is the Smile Power Racing team manager. Because yep. why not? Hello there, Mike. Hi. You must be pretty proud of your two little drivers because they are doing a stand-up job and their consistency is ultimately just winning you points every day. Well, yeah, you can't really argue by having two drivers in the championship hunt as being in the same team, which is good. I mean, obviously, I'm kind of skirting up about the uh, the top couple of places in the points as well. So if I can help them with uh, maybe seeding a point or so to aid them, then that can't hurt either. I, I'm, actually, I'm going to ask you a, a question about Jesper, because he leads our championship now on 124 points from David Junt on 120 We've got a championship leader here who, yes, he's taken a pole position and arguably he should have won a race this season, but he hasn't won a race this season and he's still there. Do you as a team boss, and this is no disrespect to David Junt, because I think David Junt's got as much chance of winning this as Jesper, as with Rude and Sven as well in the uh, fight, uh, but do you think Jesper is a sort of quality of driver that he could potentially win this driver's championship without scoring a win. Uh yeah, definitely. I've seen him score championship win uh sorry, win championships without having a single race win. So I know he can do it and it's just consistency that wins Jesper's championships, not outright pace or the fact that he can, you know, get his elbows out because he doesn't really drive very aggressively, which definitely hurts him in reverse grid races. It takes longer for him to come up through the field normally. And uh, and the fact that David's up there at the Drivers' Championship as well, I mean, personally, I thought that David would be kind of up sort of where I am, but to have David and Jesper both battling for the, the championship win is brilliant. Nice surprises, isn't it? Well, we certainly wish Smart Power the best of luck in Hungary and indeed the other rounds after that, so thank you very much for joining us, Mike Bell. And just because someone doesn't want to be left out of the celebrations, before we leave, we're going to be talking to Sven de Vries. Um, who, of course, took P3 in race one. And yeah. actually, to be fair, had a cracking race in a race two with Rude Easterbeek uh, alongside him battling up in the top ten. It's, um, it was a shame for Rude to see him have such a bad event. For, but for you or yourself, surely you're going to be happy with this one because it wasn't really affected much by you know bad driving as such. And... You've got good points as well, definitely within the championship hunt with the two small powers, as I said, uh, with Mike. Yeah, it was definitely uh, good. I was hoping for a bit more in, uh, in race one, but uh, P3 did the job, especially uh, looking up my uh, competitors in the championship at the moment, not scoring too well. Unfortunately, uh, race two, I picked up some uh, some damage from Harley in, uh, in the first, uh, first lap. But uh, for and that, it was just a, a long drive to uh, try and get towards the front. I, uh, I let Root uh, pass eventually because uh, he obviously had no weight and uh, I thought he uh, had a little less damage. So I figured uh, I'd be following him. And then coming up uh, on the last turn, I, I thought he was uh, breaking a bit early. So I, uh, I went around the outside uh, thinking I could also take Bard in the next turn. But um, after looking in the replay, I think he shifted back to, uh, to first gear or something because he... Uh, he wasn't really next to me, so I, I'm not sure what happened. I'll have to uh, check uh, with him later when he comes online. But um, yeah, obviously for my championship, I think I'm now um, tied for for place with uh, with Root. No, you're not. So you're actually uh, three points ahead. Oh, even better. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting, and uh, hopefully uh, Rune and I can uh, collect some good points uh, next weekend um, for both the constructors and our uh, our own uh, drivers' championship, and uh, see if we can uh, close the gap to uh, Jesper and uh, David. It's interesting. We've we've seen plenty of times across GPWC this season, teams that we've expected to do well have had a pretty slow start, but then they've risen back up and really started to attack. This is the first time in this championship this year that you've been ahead of Rude in the championship. Do you feel the comeback is on? Because you're on 108, uh, Yunt's on 120, and Torborg's on 124. They're not far away. Um, what do you think you're going to need to do yourself to be able to get back up to them and potentially overtake them? And actually, to be fair, do you think you can do it full stop? Well, the championship is still, uh, I think, four rounds to go, and it's it's going to be depending on consistency. I think is uh, what we have all shown this uh, this championship so far. I mean, I've had a blown up engine, I've had a couple DNFs to uh, do some crashes, so. 
it's it's definitely going to be about being consistent and finishing races. I don't think um, just raw pace is going to be enough here. I think especially with the uh, reverse grids, that's uh, very easy to pick up damage and, uh, and get a DNF and uh, ruin your uh, your good effort in race one. Oh. Hopefully that won't happen to you in future events. <laughs> I think that's the uh, case for anyone who gets damaged. Um, I've certainly suffered with it myself in plenty of events. But anyway, thank you very much for joining me, Sven. Um, still an open championship, isn't it? I think I'll go through the thank yous once again. Thank you for Dave Carsmith, my cameraman, uh, for doing the cameraman stuff that he does best. I've been James Kirk, and make sure to join us in two weeks when we head out to Hungary for the Hungarian Sport Series. From all of us here... It's a very warm goodbye.